Anyway, Steve, I need you to take this line. Promotional consideration paper the following. Square circle room where handcraft... <laughs> I was two <laughs> words away from finishing it. Try it again. Uh... Promotion consideration paid for by the following. Squared circle ringware. Handcrafted in parts unknown. Excellent. That's That's not good. bad. That's not pretty bad. good. Hey kids. Want to be cool like me? You're here. Hey kids. <laughs> Do you Tell like Primus? <laughs> <laughs> hey kids. Want to be cool like me? Your hero, Mr. OOC. Buy the new OSW Review t-shirt and stop traffic. You have the right to remain... Fabulous. Available at t-shirt.oswreview.com That's T-S-H-I-R-T dot O-S-W-Review.com Order now. Excellent. Flawless. How about that? Flawless. Flawless. How about that? You have to remind her. Bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> he puts the mania in WrestleMania. He puts the fear in Fearless Warrior. Mm -hmm. He puts the uh -oh. in this all new original movie. Yikes! <laughs> A ferocious beast threatens the main event and the world's greatest superstars John Cena. You can't see me! Triple H, Kane, The Miz, Brodus Clay, Santino, Sin Cara, AJ Lee and Mr. McMahon. Welcome to WrestleMania! Team up with a dog Bring it. who puts the smack in SmackDown. Scooby-Doo, WrestleMania Mystery. Scooby-Doo! Scooby-Doo! Scooby-Dooby-Doo! Yes, hello. 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 Hello and welcome to All SW Review, <laughs> the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay per view by pay per view. It's your boy, Jay Hunter, joined as ever by Mr. Owesley, I'm Brad. Hey. Everyone, Brad, Brad. That's right, Brad, Brad, Brad. What's this? Not. Heatwave 98, it's a special bonus episode of OSW Review. Oh, but I'd rather have Heatwave now. But, but that's, like, you did say you are bringing out Heatwave on the 25th. Swear, it's Scooby-Doo! <laughs> what a swear! It'd be fucking amazing! Should I list it as Heatwave 98? No, no, no. no. Ooh, we got a bit of feedback about the Golden Nogger Awards. L. Brown says Garvin was robbed. He was. For best quote, Rob Brown, no relation, tells us, You're making kids cry, brah. It's pretty great. Nogger has been far more influential, and what bar will prove to be the most iconic? He's right. And for best host, Wes Andrews writes in, For what it's worth, I would have voted for V1. He has the most hilarious reaction to bad matches, plus his Irish accent is the most believable. <laughs> As opposed to the other Irish lads? <laughs> That's because I sound like a commoner like Seamus. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. Like myself and JD Posh. It's, yeah, but you, it's not. Do I not you. sound like a big, a dirty American? Um, kind of. Do you know why I'm 132nd Irish? <laughs> Happy St. Patty's Day, Italy. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Let's go have the crake. <laughs> All right, enough laughing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's give you the what, why, and how huh? of Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery. Nineteen twenty-five. Rollerball Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> when Linda McMahon announced their US Senate campaign in September 2009, it resulted in WWE cleaning up their product. No more intentional bleeding, severely toning down swearing, crazy bumps, head trauma, innuendos, and sexualized females. WWE needed an image change as the product had stagnated in this post-attitude era for many years. 
Much like the Hulkamania era WWF, current WWE is rated PG, and a major plus of marketing towards kids is being able to land deals they couldn't before, such as a contract with Mattel for their action figures, and advertisers like Pizza Hut and Pepsi, instead of Stridex Pimple Cream and 1010-220 collect calls of the Attitude Era. Old school wrestling fans might remember Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling cartoon back in the mid-80s, ran for two seasons and featured many top WWF stars and some brutal voice acting. Despite being pretty much a live action cartoon, WWE haven't had any major animation products since then, but have recently thrown their hat back into the ring, with short webisodes of Camp WWE. Not, not Camp WWE. <laughs> uh, showing wrestlers as kids in a scouts type setup. No Pat Patterson. That's weird. <laughs> a Slam City, which is a stop motion animation about wrestlers holding down part time jobs, like Del Rio is a barista. John Cena's a mechanic. It actually doesn't look that bad. I won't be watching it, but I'm sure kids will love it. Like. And now, a deal with Warner Brothers Animation to produce a crossover film with Scooby-Doo before WrestleMania 30, and with the Flintstones before WrestleMania 31. I'm sure you've heard of Scooby-Doo, it's a kids cartoon show from the 70s, reformatted many times over the last 40 years, like dozens of different TV series, theatrical and direct-to-video films, TV specials, video games, you name it. It centres around a group of the oldest teenagers you'll ever meet, who drive around in a van solving mysteries, usually involving old man Jenkins trying to scare people off his abandoned amusement park. Scooby-Doo is a talking dog, a great Dane, with cowardly best pal Shaggy, and these two are the comic relief slash patsies who are more interested in scarfing down food than solving mysteries. Uh, yeah, you get loads of stoner references there as well. Big time. Wow. Cut the munchies, brah. <laughs> Fred, the ascot-wearing douchebag, is the leader who devises traps. Velma, the nerdy girl who pushes science and logic over everything else. She is pain in the tits. Mm. There's a girl we went to school with. Jay probably had a thing with her, you know. He's like, oh, Jesus, what uh, a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we were in business class and we were talking about selling laptops or something. And she goes, would the case be the same for, say, beefed burgers? We were like, what did you just say? Beefed burgers. <laughs> Fucking beefed burgers. So ever since then, I, I say beefed burgers or hand burgers. <laughs> And burgers. <laughs> and this one, Thelma or Velma or whatever, the f- is the same. F- it looks the same as this bird. She's uh, quite cretinous, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this bird was. Uh, Jay will tell you all about it. What was your name? Can't remember. Oh, You're the one that did like, like. This is business. I was never involved with this. Hey, taking but, uh, care of business, uh, Jay. Mmm. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> pass me some of that iced cream. <laughs> <laughs> And Daphne is the hot but clumsy damsel in distress. Not making an appearance tonight is the poochie of the series, Scrappy-Doo. An obnoxious, irritating pup spouting catchphrases like... What's his catchphrase? Why yada yada. That's uh, Gorilla Monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lemmy Adam. Oh. Ah! And injecting the franchise with a lethal dose. Poison. Yes. <laughs> so let's get Scooby-Doo WrestleMania mystery underway. The following tale of wrestling mystery is true, and by true I mean false. It's all lies, but they're entertaining lies, and in the end, isn't that the real truth? The answer is no. (laughs) Our story begins on a Friday night, on a quiet street outside WWE City. Welcome to WWE City. Take the next exit because it's just that good. We kick off immediately hilarious smart troll bait with a billboard of Drip Leech with the WWE title. Is this a fucking joke? I was dying for this exact conversation. <laughs> like the second I saw that, I was like, the two lads are going to go fucking nuclear. I completely understand it if they are doing that to piss people off. Right, okay. To piss the internet off. Because kids don't care. 
right? But when was the last time? Did you, have you ever seen Triple H with short hair? Have that fucking belt. And it's the fucking old spinner belt as well. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and he's the voice of WWE City as well. He's also a horrific voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the worst on this show by a mile. Yeah, yeah. He's on the cover as well, holding the belt. Yeah, <laughs> it's so weird because he's not even a bit part player in this episode. It's like Sin Cara and Cena are the two main guys. And yeah. Why is it not Cena? A big giant fucking Cena. No idea. Jogging at night, the Miz looks nothing like him. He's huge. He looks like Vince. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is accosted by Kane and then by a giant, seemingly possessed werebear, leaving him injured for the rest of the movie. Why is the Miz terrified of Kane? Has he not wrestled and beaten Kane umpteen times? <laughs> have you the exact same point? Have. Why is Miz afraid of Jobber to the Stars Kane? He's probably beaten him clean several times. Exactly. He kind of, he's afraid of the character and kind of gets used to, I don't he's know. He's afraid of being put in a match with Kane. <gasps> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be, this is me for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great answer. Right from the get-go, Miz is booked like a fucking jobber in this TV show. Ghost Bear batters him and then he runs off crying in his jocks. Unlike Hogan's cartoon, the wrestlers actually voice their characters, which is pretty cool to hear. Smash cut to the opening credits. Starring Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, Fred, Daphne, Velma, John Cena, Kane, Sin Cara, Brodus Clay, AJ Lee, Santino, The Miz, Ripple H, <laughs> Michael Cole, and Mr. McMahon. That's, That's pretty good, Steve. Yeah, well done. It's my sexy voice. <laughs> <laughs> Do a different voice. <laughs> At home, Shaggy and Scooby Doo play some kind of Connect motion control ah! WWE game. How <laughs> awesome would that be? I was giving out, where are his joy pads? Connect would never be this good. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome though? If you could play a game like that on Connect, it'd be the best thing ever. Obviously enough, it doesn't exist, expounded by Sin Cara beating Cena clean. With, yeah, with a, with a cross bocce off the top row. <laughs> yeah. After Sin Cara wins, there's then a dance scene as his celebration. And if, if you can do the dance scene perfectly, then you win the competition. You wouldn't be able to do it perfectly because you've no idea what Sin Cara is going to do. <laughs> you know? Maybe he's using the force. That's a, and he's that's... just got very fast reflexes. Yes. If you wanted to be realistic, shouldn't you be botching your dance moves? <laughs> <laughs> For completing it flawlessly, they're awarded tickets to WrestleMania in WWE City, a large town built for everything WWE. Scooby and Shaggy try to talk the gang into going to WWE City. None of them are wrestling fans. They're all like, oh no, wrestling sucks. <laughs> it's like, this is a wrestling show. Yeah, it's why, like why is everyone hating the wrestling? It's like ready to rumble. Yeah, you're you're absolutely spot on. They guilt trip their bras and bras, Velma, Fred, and Daphne to road trip to WWE City. Uh, and then entertaining enough, you know, kind of break the fourth wall shenanigans. Daphne starts complaining about they have no luggage. And then Shaggy's like, but we wear the same outfits every day. Like, eh, very good. A raccoon on the road causes them to total their van, the mystery machine. And who runs by to help them out? Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Sly, is it? Ah, oh, Sly Cooper as well. Very good. Yeah, and Cena. With two black lads. <laughs> So it's John Cena and Crime Time show up. <laughs> <laughs> Scoob and Shaggy mark out big time as Daphne gets moist. <laughs> I thought it was actually quite funny seeing them mark out towards Cena. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So that's their gimmicks. Shaggy and Scoob are huge wrestling marks. Velma is there to study WWE, contrasted to ancient warrior customs. Fred wants to test run his new camera, and Daphne hits on Cena. They're all accosted by a plot device who warns them about Act 3. It's, <laughs> it's Baird, an old force redneck with a boomstick and raccoon who forebodingly complains about WWE City encroaching on nature. So he's obviously... Prime suspect prime number suspect. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's one thing I actually did like about this, jo- uh, the, this show. They did a good job of making you go, oh, it's him, yeah. oh, it's that blonde cunt, oh, it's yeah. the black dude. He's guilty, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Lock him up till we find someone darker, boys. We do get to see some wrestling-themed business ventures in WWE City. Sleeper Hold Hotel? Best Wrestler Hotel? That's actually yeah, so that's Why do they not just have the SmackDown Hotel? It, it's already booked and ready for them, like. Yep. Royal Rumble Ribs. McMahon's Waffle House. Tap Out Diner. And Tombstone Tacos. That's, that's the only good one. At the WWE live event in the WWE arena in WWE City, how many times <laughs> did they say WWE in this All film? of the times. In the first 24 minutes, WWE is said 20 times. Whoa. It's like, it's, it's a truck <laughs> just smashing over the head. Uh, in total, 39 times. Uh, not counting that almost every background in the show has a WWE logo <laughs> in it. Just... The notion of WWE City is preposterous. I'd actually quite like to live there, to be honest. If there was just workers and wrestlers, models. And Steve. And (laughs) used to, it'd be (laughs) alright. We get to see a montage of wrestlers. Brodus and the Funkadactyls. Santino and his Cobra. New Bleach. AJ Lee. And finally, John Cena, who's tagging with best buddy Sin Cara. (laughs) Since when? (laughs) Maybe it's Juan Cena. (laughs) Versus Big Show and Del Rio. I wish when he was running to the ring, they just had him botch the entrance. (laughs) And did it like a proper cartoon. (laughs) Cena (laughs) flips Big Show off the ropes and he does a tumble. I was like, this is bollocks. This match has no psychology (laughs) at all. None. Did you notice how Del Rio has a scarf so people know it's Del Rio? Because he's so indistinguishable. From like The Miz and Cena yeah, yeah. and Michael yeah. Cole, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. Michael Cole? <laughs> Size of him. He like. doesn't even have his little yeah. fucking sheepy. Yeah. Cheepy, 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 cheepy. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, I thought it's cool that they got Michael Cole to call the action. Thought he did an excellent job. Like, he sounded exactly like he does on Raw, minus shilling the app and the network, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Cena wins with an FU and pin. Vince unveils the WWE Championship. Cena's spinner belt from 2005. And books the main event of WrestleMania one week out. To crown a new WWE Champion. Uh, so, Cookie doesn't want Ruben to be a wrestler. Right? Oh, is that, is that already? That was already. Despite yeah. him being a wrestler yeah. in his youth. Yeah. What a massive cunt. And... Them living in WWE City. Yeah, yeah, just a bit of a training temptation facility. for fuck's sake. And he's training with him. And like, and then he's like, oh, yeah, get into computers. Back to them computers. Get into the computer. <laughs> computers. That's the ticket, Ruby. <laughs> computer. It's not even like, uh, you know, you... It's like you, IT. Or yeah, IT. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Like, yeah. get them computers. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Vince actually wrote this script. You know? <laughs> Kids love the computers today. <laughs> With the video games. <laughs> Cena's bodyguards, Cookie and his son slash wrestler in training, Ruben, invite the gang to the Rockyard, WWE's outdoor training facility. Ooh, we get some voiceless cameos. Sergeant Slaughter, which I thought was cool because he was in Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Jerry Lawler. And Jimmy Hart. There's many... What do you call the... They have, like, trailers, kind of... Cabins, what do you call them? Kind of, they were like where the wrestlers would sleep. What what do you call those? They're like static home. Yeah, there's, the sta- yeah. <laughs> there's many static homes there. <laughs> and the spinner belt is carved into a side of a fucking mountain overlooking it. Why didn't Vince give these lads houses in WWE City? <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake. Also, um, 
never knew that same car had drove a dragster while wearing his mask. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's nice to know. Why are they just <laughs> using this guy? You, over there, Sim Car, drive us over here. What the fuck? Like, just because he's Mexican. <laughs> it's wrong. So, they work, train, and live in WWE City. Yeah. Are they slaves? <laughs> that night, after demolishing a stack of pizzas, Scooby has a real nasty acid trip and dreams wrestling concession stand food, like hot dogs, pizza, that kind of thing. Shaggy alerts him that he's actually sleep wrestling the giant werebear from earlier. The wrestlers intervene. Triple H pedigrees the bear and ends the film. Ah. <laughs> 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 the bear turns back Cara, H. and Brodus, and destroys a water tower which explodes somehow. And vanishes as Kane menacingly looks on from the woods. But whose side is he on? Act 2! At WWE headquarters, snippy corporate exec Miss Richards lambasts the gang for the property damage, but reveals the bear's attacks is a common occurrence. Oh, it would have been cool if she was voiced by Stephanie. And it would be cool if her security were the shield as well. Oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Rather than just letting Ghost Bear do his thing, it's like, just pay the Ghost Bear tax. Sort out everything. <laughs> <laughs> Feeny Mac comes in the room. Scoob and Shaggy mark out seeing him, and they name drop the higher power. Mr. McMahon! Back in the flesh! I can't believe I'm actually face to face with Vinny Mac! The boss! The higher power! The Mac attack! The Mac Daddy! Daddy Mac! Yes, <clears throat> uh, thanks for that trip down memory lane. That was awesome. I, I wish they had more little nods to WWE lore in this, but that, mm. that was it, like. Vinny Mac asks for their help solving the mystery of the ghost bear. The gang agree to solve the WrestleMania mystery, vindicating the name of the movie. Good stuff. Much like every Scooby-Doo show, we get these scenes of that are pure exposition. So Sin Cara, the nimble voiceless luchador, tells the story of the ghost bear through interpretive dance as Cena translates. I actually have it here saying, uh, Sin Cara's granddad beat ghost bear via a surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Like... Would a bear tap? A bear wouldn't tap. You have to teach him that that means. <laughs> That's brilliant. Now he'd probably just swipe your arm yeah, off. Just and, yeah, just bite your face off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a bear threw a strop because he lost the carny shoot fight to Sin Cara's distant relative, Sin Cara Grande. Wrecked the town, bit Grande's leg, and disappeared into the forest. I got a first time in history. Triple H and Brodus have a talking on-screen segment. I have half a mind to go out in the woods, find that bear, and rip its head off. I don't know, Triple H. He's awfully tough. I think we should stick together. What do you think, Miz? Stick together. Can you imagine Triple H having lunch at the jobber's table? <laughs> Did you notice that in every scene, Brodus was eating? Oh, really? As just like another little dig at him, like. Yes. That night, Scooby sleepwalks and apparently steals the WWE title. In an incredible evasion of privacy and hacksaw skills, the gang contend that he was hypnotized, showing video footage of Scoob's Connect Game Victory dance on the Titan Tron. That makes no He did that before anything. It doesn't make any and sense. And it fucking recorded them and they got a hold of it wow. from Microsoft. Yeah. It is Connect. <laughs> it's, it's spying the spy yeah. bot. Nice hacks, Reuben. That's my nephew. He's a computer genius. That doesn't convince Vinnie Mac, who says they can either go to jail or, as per rules of WWE City, the two can curtain jerk WrestleMania versus Kane tomorrow night. <laughs> WWE City Law. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. Now, they get all concerned about this. It's fucking Kane, lads. They should be fucking delighted. It's like the anti-streak. <laughs> <This Yeah>, guy... <laughs> He's guaranteed to lose a exactly. That's right. <laughs> he can't win. It's impossible. 
and someone tells Zack Ryder to steal the WWE belt, and you get a pe- Mania yeah. payday. <laughs> nice. Cena's bodyguard, Cookie, agrees to train them and immediately pawns them off to AJ. Did you see the size of her camel toe? It went like all the it's way up to her belly yeah. button. <laughs> it was like, it's a fucking camel foot. <laughs> Moose knuckle. <laughs> Why would you draw that? Sick fucking Korean is drawing this <laughs> shit. <though. laughs> Brilliant. Her song is not suitable for a training montage. It's like, this is not South Park. Jesus Christ, they have the best montages ever. Yes. Kane with lipstick, as Shaggy calls her, puts them through the paces. Seeing his bodyguard and developmental talent, Ruben is pissed that his uncle, Cookie, is training them, but not him. He had a dream to be a wrestler, but you know what Cookie told him? (laughs) Shit! Cookie doesn't want his nephew to be a wrestler, but rather be a computer genius. Get them computers. (laughs) (laughs) Like him. This is after seeing Ruben do the impossible. He countered a pedigree. (laughs) Easily. Hold on. Scott Steiner showed the correct technique to counter a pedigree back in 2003, and it's the kick punch. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've brought the kick punch up in a while. Oh, Pyop! yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Spicy, spicy the shit out of that. The gang, a.k.a. Mystery Inc. and Cena, search the forest to uncover the ghost bear mystery, trespassing on Baird, the forest redneck's property. They have two bolder chase sequences where you can see the traditional hand-drawn animation and much smoother CG animated rocks. In the bear's cave, they find evidence to clear Shag and Scoob, books on hypnosis, and a bigger plot, a schematic to shut down WWE with an EMP, which would kill the arena's power and pay-per-view signal. A bad god, it's the ghost bear! It KO's Cena, leave, and the gang leave him to die. <laughs> <laughs> they just hightail it. No one picks up, it's unbelievable. But, but then he starts snoring. If, you're, if somebody is knocked out, do they snore? No. Yeah, if you'd left them there for well, long I, enough and like they the, were on their side or something, well, maybe. If yeah. their airway was partially blocked, I yes. guess, you know, yeah. kind of like like an acting. That'd be weird though, you know. <sighs> Would you? It's like, a man is after being knocked out, at least roll him on his side. <laughs> roll him on his side. <laughs> you know, Jesus Christ, like. And by the way, what the fuck is John Cena, biggest wrestler in the world, running around after a ghost bear? With a dog, a talking dog, and a homosexual. The night before WrestleMania. <laughs> like, does it have to be Cena, though? I hear Trent Barretta. <laughs> he is. <laughs> There's a roller coaster type action sequence ending with a water slide as Scoob and Shaggy use an unconscious John Cena as a raft. I thought that was actually quite funny. When they yeah. kind of it was like an actual water. surfboard. Yeah. How did he float? <laughs> <laughs> he'd be bobbing up and down like you'd probably be okay Cena would be drowned maybe physics fall under WWE law as well uh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean kiss my ascot Fred's not that strong a character but he's a huge doucher constantly snapping photos with his camera but chastises Daphne for taking one of Cena they wash up through the drain pipes right back at the WWE training facility. Oh, that explains how the bear gets in and out undetected. It's a bit too clever for an hour. I, I was like, that is an intelligent ghost bear. <laughs> and if he truly is a ghost, he should be able to ghost through walls. That's mm. a very good point. Mm. He is smarter than your average bear. <laughs> they get back to uh, WWE City and meet up with uh, Richards and Vince and... They decide to use Mania as a bear trap, and uh, I disagree with this logic. Why? It's grossly negligent and dangerous. Potential 72,000 deaths. <laughs> well, I was going to say 72,000 lawsuits. That's yeah. also true. <gasps> but you're in WWE shitty! <laughs> 72,000 matches at Mania! <laughs> Kane! <laughs> Bound to win one of them. <laughs> The chain gang reiterate to snippy Miss Richards the plot to sabotage WrestleMania to cause mass panic and subsequently shut down WWE due to negative press. So, heading into the main event, here are the plot threads. Mr. Inc., they need to make sure WrestleMania stays on the air. 
And since they have no evidence, Shaggy and Scoob will have to wrestle Kane. And Fred will turn the arena into a trap to capture and solve the mystery of the ghost bear. It's a thundery night, but it's WrestleMania, baby! <laughs> Shaggy and Scoob, now under ring names Skinny Man and Dead Meat. Skinny Man's a great name. They get kicked around by Kane. Oh yeah, just when they pan to the crowd here. Okay, it's your film, and you financed it, and you, you'd expect it going in. It's just a big, giant PR stunt. WWE show its different demographics. It's a kid watching with his parents, sorority girls. And frat boys as well. So it's just like everybody. Scooby-Doo and company. They're huge WWE fans. And they constantly tell you how popular and widespread WWE is. And how shutting down WWE is like cancelling Christmas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'd expect that because of the film. But it's just shameless and it's just smashed in your face. Like Scooby makes his comeback using his video game skills. That's, that's very, let's please children, Deus Ex. Velma concludes that the WWE title is fake, and it's actually the EMP. She's right, but ah, jinkies, which is Scooby speak for fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Cena put the belt on Shaggy, and he was going to flip him out of the arena, but as he was flying, Scooby was thrown into and they got in the way, and Scooby done fucked up. Bet you that hurt like fuck. Bet you smashed heads (laughs) against each other. Jesus, could you imagine him? Despite Cena's best effort, it goes off and the whole arena sequentially shuts down, which is, that looks pretty cool. It's like the Rock's entrance from when he came back for his guest host. Yeah. Huh? What's going on? Before panic spreads, the face wrestlers from earlier light giant stacks of green glow torches. Therefore turning mania into velocity! (laughs) (laughs) And Triple H restores power outside in his underwear via generators. Should he not be ready for his match? Possibly, in, yes. Instead of standing up in the raft. Like, Brodus, fair enough. The Miz, fuck off. He should be at least backstage. Not there with a fucking flare. Like, get bleeding. Trent Barretta. It's Trent Barretta. Yeah. No, he's a bait for Ghost <laughs> He's, he's bait. Bait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his carcass Beretta carcass just lying there after me look before yeah. now I was going to say right. enter ghost bear <laughs> the outage brings the ghost bear to the arena headed off by developmental talent Ruben now in his wrestling gear calling himself bone bender bone <laughs> fucking pudding bender <laughs> and they both get launched into the ring as it turns into a cage match. What's the deal with his fucking gear? He's like someone who wouldn't be allowed in a Mortal Kombat game. <laughs> I was thinking of Sub-Zero from Running Man or something. Or, okay. or, He's da- just... Damien Demento. Yeah. Right there. As soon as I saw opening match, which is the main event, is a cage match, it's like, this is fucking ready to rumble. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, there's a lot of parallels between Arquette's film and this, like... Two best buds who are huge wrestling marks. They crash their van. They have a wrestling match in a dream sequence. The nephew becomes a wrestler despite the uncle's objections. Holy shit. Non-fans become wrestling fans. And the pay-per-view ends with a cage match where they wrestle. Wowzers. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. scary biscuits. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so it's Scoob and Shaggy, Ruben, Sin Cara and Gian Cena and they're taking on Kane and the Ghost Bear <laughs> and the two heels turn on each other and start fighting each other uh, we get some nifty lucha work by Sin Cara well, when they penned this movie they must have had such high hopes for him <sighs> he was number two baby face behind John Cena they better bring out like another cock t-shirt like. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw a picture of that there a couple of days ago and I just started pissing myself laughing how did they not see it? Yeah. But it's, I think we discussed it before, when you're looking at something for so long and you're working on it, you can't see it anymore. It, it's a massive cock. Yeah. It's huge. Mastodonic. <laughs> it, 
maybe the picture, like when they took the picture in color, it was like blue and yellow, and so you wouldn't see it. But when you put it all on the sepia, oh shit, it's a cock. Yeah. You know. Mm. But despite Sinkara's nifty lucha work, and seen as two moves of Doom, it's like a really lazy proto bomb. You know, his, his spin out power bomb. Mm. And the five knuckle shuffle, I can't believe they haven't changed the name of that. Because it's wanking. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, they changed the FU and the SDFU. So, yeah. uh, the ghost bear hulks up and runs wild. Scooby-Doo, it's up to you. Only dead meat Ooh. can tip the balance now. <laughs> can he do it? Can dead meat save the day? Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Eventually, they starfish spread the bear and subdue him with Scooby-Doo's gut-wrenching belly bomb, which is a 450 centon flop. Much like Cena or HBK's closing move sequence, we get Scooby-Doo's trademark tropes, i.e. his five moves of doom. One, Shaggy shouts, Scooby-Doo, where are you? He's right beside you. <laughs> There's no reason to ask. Two, the bear defeated, Fred quips. Now let's find out who this ghost bear really is. Number three, the reveal is a face that turned heel. The ghost bear is actually cocky in a super suit. To the surprise of no one, the guy who kept telling his nephew to not be a wrestler. Get into computers. The computers. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, the gang turned to the camera and slowly explained the master plan. Oh, the exposition time, Jesus Christ, it was ridiculous. But why the fuck did they let this go on for as long as they did? They, you know, it, it's, uh, they're all very clever when they take off the mask. Ah, it was him, and I'll tell you why it was him. You fuck, if you knew that already, why did you let the EMP go off? Why did you let him nearly ruin WrestleMania? Why did you let him fucking murder half the fucking kids of fucking WWE City? <laughs> it's a little thing called showmanship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were people were going on about the bear. And the crazy bear. Why didn't they say... A ghost bear. <laughs> why, why didn't they say... It's a guy in a fucking suit, lads. Because yeah, they barely knew yeah. it. Don't work it like it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Is it not a bit cunty? Cookie never gets to explain his side. And everyone just has to take these teenagers yeah. at, the, at the word. And what about Ruben? Ruben's just like, yeah, see ya. In all fairness, though, he could have explained himself instead of saying, I would have gotten away with it <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> for you meddling kids and your joint crazy duck. Yeah. Kind of got him banged to rights, really, don't yeah. <laughs> yeah. In gratitude, Vinnie Mac awards the real WWE Championship <coughs> belt to both Scooby and Shaggy as the faces hoist them up and chant their name. Well, no, just Scooby's name. Would they not be like Skinny Man? Because that's what their name was. Fucking shoot. This is a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby. Gotta work. You got Scooby. 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 So they ate a thousand Scooby snacks. Didn't draw a dime though. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby gives us his trademark. Scooby. And we're gout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, on to match two. Yep, match two, please, Jake. That that was the curtain jerker. Yeah. Oh, right. We've yeah. like still got like eight more matches on Mania to go. <laughs> it's Tamina Schnocker. Murder, Murder bomb. Weirdo! <laughs> <laughs> Think of the match, lads. <laughs> no psychology. <laughs> Therefore, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. 
Needs more Cronus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what a yeah! What a thoroughly disappointing WrestleMania. So so we got one match featuring Kane, turns into a clusterfuck with a ghost bear and a dog and a dog and, and a skinny man and a skinny man and ends with Shaggy <laughs> and Scooby winning the world title. So my synopsis: David Arquette is spinning in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, David Arquette is not dead. He's still spinning in his grave. <laughs> yes, but I would imagine he would die of grief. <laughs> Uh, what do you think, Steve? <laughs> I finished it. Uh, it was all right. It was it was stupid, but it's a kid show. It was entertaining. Did you get a chuckle out of him? I got more of a chuckle of like my own smart arse comments that I was writing down. Just the term "ghost bear" was brilliant for for me. Just loved it. He's such a mark for himself, isn't he? Visionary. No, he's like, I'm so witty. He, oh, no, oh, that, 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 was the, that was his actual name, was Ghost Bear. That's I know, what they Steve, called him. Know, That's, it, was, it was great. Just no, it's very good. It's very good. No, um, no, I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was pretty poor, actually. But watchable. Uh, I thought the kids are going to love this. Yeah. Love it. Um, and I do rate movies and like this one I gave 3 out of 10 which I thought was quite generous like I was trying to think of movies that are worse and there's a, there are movies that I would have rated 2 out of 10 that this is better than so I had to give it a 3 ok fair enough I'd agree with f- f- all of that <laughs> It like it's a kids movie so you know I couldn't be too harsh on it but that that's not to say you couldn't have a smart funny movie that adults could enjoy as well uh, like Shrek 1 or 2 or Monster House. Yeah, I don't know if it was the writing, but Scooby's gang, especially, like, you can, okay, wrestlers are terrible actors, that's why you're a wrestler. Um, so you'd expect their voice acting to be terrible. It sounds like they couldn't give a shit because this is just a gig that they have to do because Warner Brothers told them to do it, you know? It was a pretty simple film. I chuckled a few times. I also enjoyed hearing the wrestling songs outside of the WWE broadcast. But beyond hearing wrestlers doing voice acting, I wouldn't recommend it. Triple H, lads. I think I said earlier, he's fucking horrific. Vince McMahon sounded a bit terrified as well. How weird is it to hear Vince McMahon chanting Scooby-Doo? <laughs> Very strange. One of the reasons WWF stopped with Hogan's cartoon, besides not drawing well, is that <laughs> it wasn't drawn well. Drawing it wasn't drawing well. well. It wasn't drawing well. <laughs> was that the hand-drawn animation takes months to produce and storylines... And heel face turns happen quite regularly. I do believe Steve had the answer for this. Uh, Korea. Yep. Uh, so it dates the cartoon very quickly. So you see it here as well. Like Sin Cara's prominence. Kane's not corporate Kane. Brodus is still on TV. Where's Daniel Bryan? Ex- oh, where's CM Punk? And Orton. Yeah, to combat this, they should just animate it with Maya. Like what South Park do. And bang it out in six days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just record the audio before Smackdown. So. There you go. Mm. Shocked they couldn't snag The Rock for a scene or two. Plaster his face on the front, you know? Yeah. Maybe they're hoping for a sequel, Scooby-Doo film. <laughs> I was thinking they could have a WWE amusement park that gets haunted. By what type of ghost? What what animal is a, ghosted? A ghost mutt. Yeah. Ghost mutt. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. That looks just like Scooby-Doo. Ooh. And that's how we'll get framed, and that's how you we, get him down. We could also have a dinner dog. <laughs> And you could uh, get Churchill as well. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> um, so I was just thinking of amusements you could have in WWE Amusement Park. You could have the Undertaker's Ghost House. Or the, the Last Ride. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Seamus's Emerald Isle. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. Or Bray Wyatt's Rape Cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to meet that. <laughs> It smells funny. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, all in all, it's an in- inoffensive kids' film. You know, don't pay to see it. Uh, Download yeah. it illegally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, in our wrap up section, I've got a special surprise for you. Let's see what Matthew of Botchamania thinks. <laughs> Yeah. 
so sweet. We're in the aftermath section of the show. And we got Matthew of Botchamania on the show. How's it going, buddy? It's going fabulously well, Jay Hunter. How are you today, sir? Excellent, excellent. Thanks for joining us. Now, the big question on everyone's minds. Uh, what did you think of the Scooby-Doo WrestleMania mystery? Well, quite frankly, because I was forced into watching this by the good Jay Hunter. Yeah, cheers, mate. Right. Um, I had zero expectations about this. Um for a Scooby-Doo animated film type thing in 2014, it's really not that bad, actually, considering I went in with, oh, fuck this. Um, basically, I uh, sold it to my stoner friends, I mean shaggy friends, um, on the basis that Miz gets mauled by a bear in the first few minutes. And they were like, all right, cool, it's already at six out of ten, so before you've even watched the thing. And then Big Show hit John Cena with a picnic table, and all right, now it's out seven out of ten. And then uh, Jimmy Hart appears for no reason, and very briefly, and it's like, all right, this is the best Scooby-Doo wrestling thing that has ever existed. So a lot of nice little things there. I mean, it's still, at the end of the day, a Scooby-Doo cartoon. Um, I have watched many Scooby-Doo cartoons as a kid. I even watched the one where we did the crossover with the other robot dog, and it was horrible. Um, and like millions and millions of children, I hate Scrappy-Doo with uh, passion. Um <laughs> But, so yeah, you can go. All right, cool. I've, I've, if you've ever seen any Scooby Doo show ever, you'll know how it ends and how it's going. But the nice little things like the very uh, Empress New Groove influenced scene of Oh, don't worry, I speak Master Luke Cador. It's, it's, it's not that bad. Brodus Clay being actually black was another highlight because um, obviously they looked the footage and did what I know. A few of my friends said, and I'll never admit it, but did do the thing when he came out as the new. Funk is on a roll, Fungodactyl, Brodus Clay, and did go, well, he is a he is a bit black, isn't he? Like one of those things where trying to be politically correct when there's a giant white guy <laughs> acting black and your brain's telling you one thing and your <laughs> sense is telling you other thing. Like, is he black? He's like, dude, the guy's paler than me. Um, but yeah, no, Scooby-Doo, Brodus Clay is actually black, um, which is fine. Hey, it's his life decision if he wants to be black. I wish him all the best in his basketball career. And, and the fact that the, the wrestling bear sequence I thought was amazing to give reference to the actual wrestling bears. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking this would be great if they had some sort of zombie dead wrestler, like just the, the ghost of Andrew Martin about trying to steal Scooby's pizza. But my absolute favorite thing about this film, Jay, was the fact that there's a little scene where they're discussing the bear and just behind Santino, there's the old SmackDown giant fist set in the background. Yeah. Um, awesome. So I think it's going to be one of those things where they set the storyline up. They did, all right, this will happen, this will happen, so these. And then they went back and said, like, all right, here's a little reference here, like the higher power thing you were saying. Here's the little fist here. And here's the Miz getting more by a bear. Is there anyone that you felt was left out that you would have liked to have seen in the film? Benoit. <laughs> Could you imagine what would happen if Mystery Inc. had to solve the mystery with, like, Scott Steiner. <laughs> yeah, that would have been very pleasurable to watch. And he just like hit on Daphne, and she'd be like disgusted, and it would be pretty great. No, that would have been it. And um, she'd be there creaming over John Cena, and he just stands in front of her, starts posing, and is like, "Why don't you get a real man?" And all the things. <laughs> and he's just there, like, "What are you saying?" <laughs> um, and just walks off. Awesome. Would you recommend it to wrestling fans? I would recommend this to any wrestling fan who smokes weed um, and are too lazy to do anything else. And that might sound like a joke, but there's a lot of people that fit that criteria. I know a lot of them. Um, the type of thing to enjoy, um, it's not quite Gravity Falls or Adventure Time. It's definitely kids, and it's further going to make you feel bad for being a wrestling fan because it's like I keep on telling my friends when they get upset about product placement and other characters like Cena. I'm like, this is aimed at kids. You are not the target audience. You're aware of this. And I'm like, yeah. So it's one of these things where it was like, okay, Matthew, you have to watch this kids' film. You know, I know there's nothing wrong with good kids' films, but, you know, you're a wrestling fan. You're going to have to eat this. Then watch the Baywatch episode of WCW. Love it. Yes. Not enough Taskmaster these days. <laughs> He'd been perfect for this Scooby Doo thing, actually. Yes. Yeah, that's a good thing. He is straight out of Scooby Doo. That's it, that they're like, oh, something's been haunting the forest. Is it the Oh, Shivani going, it's the Yeti! And then Scooby <laughs> Chat, you're like, dude, that's a mummy. 
That's clearly a mummy. We've been seeing these for decades now. I'm trying to think my favourite Scooby-Doo memory of uh, watching Scooby-Doo as a kid. Because I used to watch it a lot. Um, I wouldn't go and do anything else back in the day. There wasn't like, oh, I'll just go on Facebook or YouTube. It was, well, it's not on the other five channels. I think I'll just wait for this to finish. Um, and every time I try and guess, I was not really following the plot, who the guy at the end would be that was haunting the McDonald's chicken factory or whatever. And I was always wrong, which is really bad. I was a very stupid kid growing up. So I'd have to say there's no happy memories of Scooby-Doo up till now. So this is, by default, my favourite Scooby-Doo feature. And on that bombshell, <laughs> we shall bid you adieu. Thank you, Matthew. Amazing. Um, yeah, so thanks for coming on the show, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. So let's take it to the wrestling is. Her. <laughs> oh, God, Suave a, segment. Look, yeah. that was a proper little rubbery one there, isn't it? <laughs> Is there something we can do for you? Yeah, what the hell's your problem? I need a ride. You ain't got the right equipment for us to give you a ride. Do we look like a taxi service to you? Hey, what did I say? You ain't got the right equipment, bitch. I didn't ask for a ride. I said I need one. Hey, get off my bike. Now who's the bitch? No, you did. Yes, I did. Animal, you lucky bastard. Like I've always told you, Gunner, can't take it with you. I can't believe you actually bought the big blue beast. Not only did I buy it, but check out the balls on this bitch right here. What do you say, me and you? Take this bad beast right here on a little beat run. That is if uh, you think you can handle her, Sally. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's Ooh. Gunner. Let's do it. <laughs> Come on. Oh, well, hello, Frank. You know, I got your usual for you. Two big donuts and uh, some hot coffee. Bigger Marge, and you keep the change. Bam! <laughs> Give me a beer and a shot of vodka. No, 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 no! <laughs> so with the WrestleMania mystery solved, it's time to get back on track. Coming up next will be original ECW's highest rated pay-per-view, Heat Wave 98. For all the latest updates and daily awesomeness, go to our Facebook page at oswreview.com. Special thanks to Steve Yurko at steveyurko.tumblr.com and Chris from reloadlastsave.com for their talents and Kev at Squared Circle Ringwear for producing our first ever t-shirt. Uh, available at t-shirt.oswreview.com That's T-S-H-I-R-T dot O-S-W-Review.com order now. Excellent. Subscribe and check out the rest of our episodes right here at youtube.oswreview.com. So it's a goodbye from Ozzy. There you go. Day one. I give you. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, computers. A computer. A computer. A computer is you. <laughs> <laughs>